Hi, I'm Katie. If you're new to cruising, you're in for an unforgettable adventure. But before you set sail, there's a few common mistakes that new cruisers sometimes make that you'll need to know about. In this video, I'll walk you through some of these mistakes and provide some tips to ensure that you have a smooth and enjoyable cruise. So mistake number one is not arriving at the departure, the cruise departure city, early enough. We always recommend that you fly, particularly if you have to fly, you fly in the day before. You know, we've all read and, and seen on the news about uh, the myriad of travel delays this year that have really caused nightmares for a lot of a lot of folks. And so it's important that you get there early. We never recommend flying in the day of. Fly in the night before, stay overnight, and then that way you have kind of a stress-free morning arriving at the port for your cruise. Mistake number two is not pre-booking your excursions. Now, generally speaking, for new cruisers, we recommend that you book ship-sponsored excursions. This is because if for some reason one of those tours or excursions is running late, the ship will wait for you if it's one of their excursions. And so we definitely recommend pre-booking these. You definitely have the option to do that when you book your cruise or a few months after you book your cruise. We recommend not waiting until you're on board the ship because typically your first, second, or even possibly your third choice of excursions will likely be sold out. So definitely take the time to research those before you leave and book those ahead of time. Mistake number three kind of relates to excursions and that is not thoroughly researching the ports of call for your cruise. So we really, I love researching. I get great satisfaction out of researching and kind of planning out our, our vacations. And uh, some of the resources we like to use are cruisecritic.com, TripAdvisor is also another great one to research, you know, ports of call, cities, to see what are the best things to do, what are the best places to eat, uh, what are the best beaches. And so I can relate a story on our most recent cruise to the Southern Caribbean. We knew we were going to Bonaire. And so I was researching the Bonaire um, topic on cruisecritic.com and I found glowing review after glowing review for this one particular snorkeling excursion with the woodwind. And we ended up booking that. Now this was a third party um, excursion, it wasn't through the ship, um, but we ended up booking that and it really was kind of a once in a lifetime experience. And so the reviews were right. Uh, we're so glad we did that. And so we always encourage you to research those points of call. Mistake number four that new cruisers sometimes make, and I have to admit the seasoned cruiser, is overpacking. Um, now I kind of like to consider myself a cautious packer and not necessarily an overpacker, but I might be splitting hairs a little bit on that. Um, but in general, kind of what, the lesson that I've learned is that you really need two outfits per day for a cruise. You need a casual outfit for you know during the day, every day around the ship, um, and then you just need a little bit dressier outfit, a dress, dress slacks, blouse for dinner. But what I learned on our last cruise is that I didn't necessarily have to have an individual outfit for each of those things. So, for example, you know I brought six dresses for kind of everyday dinners and two dresses for the evening chic or dress your best night. But I found I was only wearing those dresses for a couple of hours in the evening. So I really could have doubled up or even tripled up and worn dresses, you know, twice or three times. And I don't think anyone would have noticed and it would have saved some space in my bag. So just keep those things in, not in mind. A couple of outfits a day, plus, you know, swimsuit if you enjoy spending time on the pool deck and you should be good to go. But it's definitely okay to rewear outfits. Mistake number five is not budgeting for some kind of unexpected, potentially onboard expenses. So this could be things like photographs. There is a ship photographer on those ships and you have the opportunity to have your, your picture taken at various times, including kind of the evening chic or dress your best nights. And so those all come at an expense if you purchase those. 
Now, if you're going on a honeymoon or you're going on a cruise for a family reunion and you know you want a lot of photographs, it might be worth it to you to, to pre-buy a photography package so that, that you get lots of photos for that price. For us, we don't tend to take a lot of um, photos by the ship photographer uh, and we don't tend to buy a lot. We will typically usually only get our picture taken on the on the evening chic or formal night and we usually only buy maybe one or two photos. We'll get the digital copies but regardless of whether you're getting the digital copies or the printouts that is an extra cost. Also of course if you enjoy gambling that you, know, you have to pay um, pay for that activity. If you um, like to do some of the behind the scenes ship tours, you know, or take a wine tasting class. Those usually do come at an extra cost, as well as room service. So room service on many cruise lines is free, but you do typically have to pay a gratuity, like a 15% gratuity, and not necessarily all items on the room service menu may be free, and it may not be free at all times of the day. So definitely do your research before you head on a new cruise, and plan for those extra expenses. If these tips are helpful. We would appreciate it if you would hit the like button below the video. It helps this content and our channel be seen by more viewers and we do truly appreciate it. All right, the next mistake is skipping travel insurance. We always recommend that you take the time to purchase travel insurance, whether it's through the ship or through a third party. And I do recommend that you really research those and compare those plans to make sure you're getting the best deal for your money. Of course, uh, trip insurance is helpful in case you have to cancel your trip last minute due to emergency. But you also want to take a look at medical coverage. Always recommend having adequate medical coverage on your trip insurance um, to, to cover you in case you do get sick or injured while you're on your cruise. And I can um, maybe talk a little bit about a story I read not too long ago about a woman and her husband who were on a cruise. It was a Caribbean cruise and they were going on an excursion on a catamaran. And as they were walking down the dock, there was apparently a plank of the dock that was cracked and the woman stepped on that. The plank broke and she fell through, badly injuring her leg. And she unfortunately had to have I think she had to have surgery and obviously, you know, unfortunately they missed the rest of their cruise, but they thankfully had trip insurance, um, which obviously helped cover the cost of her medical expenses. They had adequate coverage, so they didn't end up having to pay tens of thousands of dollars uh, for, for her medical coverage. So it's really just so important to, to purchase trip insurance. All right. Mistake number seven is ignoring seasickness prevention. And I can relate to this one personally. So when I started cruising many years ago, never ever had an issue with seasickness. In fact, I remember a cruise that my son and I were on um, you know, a long time ago, and there were some pretty rough seas, and there were a lot of passengers on that cruise ship that were sick. And and I was fine, uh, and I didn't need to take any seasickness medication. I had brought some, but didn't need to take it. Uh, later in life, owned a boat, was out on the water a lot, never had any seasickness. Then on our cruise in 2019, there were some rough seas, and I definitely felt the effects of it, and I was pretty surprised. And so I was nauseous, dizzy, uh, but thankfully I had packed some seasickness prevention, things like Bonine, and I had the seasick, seasickness patches where you put one behind each ear. And so that really helped me tremendously. I still felt a little bit, like I, I continued to kind of feel that sense of rocking motion throughout that cruise and even in the several days after we were back. But I feel like, you know, what I did bring definitely helped me. Now on our most recent cruise, I again brought the seasick patches, but I put them on the night before we left on our cruise. And I feel like maybe some of the medication kind of got into my system. And so that very first night of the cruise, we did have some rough seas and I was perfectly fine. I was fine throughout the rest of the cruise. Did not experience that kind of rocking motion even after we were back. So highly recommend that you don't forget to pack this. 
Mistake number eight is not keeping track of ship time versus local time. Uh, I didn't even know this was a thing until I started cruising, but sometimes the ship time, the time that the ship acknowledges, is different than the local time. Now, typically, um, every morning, the captain will come on over the speakers and, and do his morning announcements, and he will generally call out what the ship time is, and if it's different than the local time, that's usually also printed in kind of the daily activity um, sheet or planner that your cabin steward leaves in your room. It's also on the ship's app, um, if you download that. But why it's so critical to know that is especially in your ports of call because there's an all aboard time, right, that you have to be back on board by. Uh, and again, the ship will potentially leave you if you're not on a ship sponsored excursion. So it's really critical to know what time you need to be back and, and what time it is on the ship time versus the local time. So always make a note of that. The next mistake is missing out on onboard activities. And I am definitely guilty of this. When Will and I go on vacation, we have you know, pretty stressful jobs and we just like to relax. Um, and so I know on our, our cruise in 2019, I almost felt like we relaxed a little too much. I was a little bored at times. So for us, it's finding that right balance of participating in activities, but also finding that relaxation. And so in the ship app and in that daily kind of activities um, planner that your cabin steward leaves, we always encourage you to read through that and, and look at the activities that might be interesting to you. So things like, um, again, I kind of mentioned wine tastings earlier, uh, all kinds of trivia con contests, different musical acts playing around the ship, uh, even on some ships, you know, different movies. There's always different activities going on in the pool area. And for us on this last cruise, we didn't discover this until midway through the cruise, but they had a guest lecturer on board who was an astronomer. And we had missed a couple of his earlier lectures, but we did happen to go to one that was on Stonehenge. And it was really fascinating. And we kind of were sorry we had missed out on his earlier presentation. So that's our tip is just to make sure you read through that. Maybe put yourself out there and do some things you wouldn't normally do but you know, try to balance that with relaxation time as well. Mistake number 10 is not exploring the ship. You know, I think as cruisers, we obviously, we go to our cabins, we go to the dining room, you know, we probably go to the pool deck, um, maybe we go to the theater, and, and maybe you don't really do much else than that, but you really could be missing out on some hidden gems. So what I like to do is on the first sea day, I like to kind of either start towards the bottom of the ship or the top uh, and then just kind of work my way down. Uh, and I can give a perfect example on our last cruise on Celebrity Equinox. On the first sea day, I went you know, to the highest deck I could and I found um, the Sky Observation Lounge and it's this beautiful large space, space at the front of the ship that has these panoramic windows looking out to the sea. It's just a beautiful space, great place to sit and read a book or just to watch, you know, watch the water go by. Uh, and so I always recommend really taking time to explore the ship. You never know what you might find and you might find kind of your favorite, favorite hangout spot like we did. All right, the last mistake uh, is mistake number 11. And I put this in here for my husband. And while it's not necessarily a mistake, I'll just say it's definitely a recommendation. And that is, to have breakfast in the main dining room. And I think most people on cruises tend to go to the buffet for breakfast and it can get pretty crowded. And generally the food you know, in the buffet is pretty good for breakfast, but it's kind of a special extra treat to have breakfast in the main dining room. You know, we're, I know in our daily lives so busy, we barely eat breakfast a lot of days. If we do, it's usually just grabbing a quick like protein bar or snack. And so for us, it's just this little luxury to have a, a sit down breakfast on a cruise ship. Uh, it really starts our day out right. And so we definitely recommend that. I hope these tips and mistakes and ways to overcome them were helpful. We would love it if you would consider subscribing to our channel. And until next time, happy cruising.